morning, everybody. Y'all ready to get started? How about this? We get our blood circulating first thing this morning. Y'all get your blood circulating first thing this morning? Or is that what the coffee is for? <laughs> <laughs> Grab you a seven sided gold dial right there on the back of the table, if you would, as you come in. Grab one. All right. Make yourself comfortable. All right, we're going to do a little exercise just to get our blood flowing this morning, very first thing, and this is a participation class, so I want you all to start participating right off the bat, how does that sound, okay? And so it's going to, we're going to do a little thing called the Duke of York, the Duke of York. So, I'm going to show it to you one time, and then we'll get started. Ready? Watch it. There was a Duke of York who had 10,000 men. He marched them up the hill, he marched them down again. When they're up, they're up, and when they're down, they're down, and when they're only halfway up, then they're up or down. Got it? All right, everybody ready? Push back just a little bit there, and let's see if we can get started. Mm -hmm. There was a Duke of York who had 10,000 men. He marched them up the hill, he marched them down again. And when they're up, they're up, and when they're down, they're down. And when they're only halfway up, they're neither up nor down. All right, you got the idea? I don't, uh, uh, we're that no. one just thinking of crap. All right, aren't y'all ready here? Okay, everybody put your coffee down. Quick sip. You might need it here. You ready? There was a Duke of York in 2000. He marched them up the hill. He marched them down again. And when they're up, they're up. And when they're down, they're down. And when they're only halfway up, they're neither up nor down. There was a Duke of York. He marches them up the hill, he marches them down again, and when they're up, they're up, and when they're down, they're down, and when they're on the halfway up, they're either up or down. All right, give yourself some more You know, it's a true story about a Duke of York. And the Duke of York was made fun of a lot because what he would do is it was all peacetime. They never had any wars there, but every day he'd make his men get up and they'd march him up the hill and march him back down again. The very next day, they would get up very early in the morning, and they would march up the hill, and they'd march down the hill. And guess what happened when war actually broke out? They were what? Ready. They were ready. That's right. They were prepared to be able to deal with the task because they had done the preparation work ahead of time. And so if we only do half of it, we're neither up or down, are we? And so when we look at Toastmasters, when we look at it, our abilities to be able to accomplish things. We literally need to go all the way up. We need to make sure that we put all the time into our into our program and, and don't procrastinate like I have a tendency to do sometimes. Y'all don't ever procrastinate, do you? No, no, I'm so glad for that. I'm so glad for that. Well, today we're talking about doing the impossible. That doing the impossible is much easier than we think. And We've got a tool to help us to begin to do that. And I want you to begin to think about some things that seem to be impossible to you because we want to begin to take those things and we're going to take a look at it as a team and see if we can't figure out how to do some of these impossible things. Have you ever seen a seven-sided gold dot? Did everybody get one when you came in? Okay, you're missing one. Can you give her a seven-sided gold dot real quick? This is a small one that you keep in your pocket all the time. It's a seven-sided gold die. All it is is a tool to help us to organize our thoughts. You know, Napoleon Hill, after he had interviewed over 500 people, he had wrote you know, in his book, Think and Grow Rich, that whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe it can achieve, it can achieve whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe it can achieve. What that really means is that it comes from the inside. All those solutions, every single thing from you comes from the inside out. When you look at this seven-sided gold die, it's going to have six outsides, and it's going to have one inside. The inside's invisible, but you know it's there, right? You know it's there. The seven side actually makes up over 99.9% .9 of it. If you were to take those little pips off of the back of it, it would look like a block of gold. A block of gold. And that's what that really is. It's a solid block of gold. And what we're going to do is we're going to put ourselves on the inside. Because we realize that we think from the inside out. out. We think from the inside out. Every single thing that we accomplish, we accomplish first of all in our in our mind, in our thought process, before we accomplish it any any place else. And so it's that thinking process we can always go back. Now, the way this actually functions is it functions sort of as a trigger, a trigger for your brain. Okay. For an example, we are, 
brain is triggered by five physical or five physical senses: the things that we yeah. hear, the things that we smell, the things that we taste. Okay, did you say kiss? <laughs> the things that we taste. All right. The things that we what? Touch, touch, and feel. That's right. And also the things that we see. The things that we see are five physical senses. Actually, what occurs is that it releases some electric chemicals up there in our brain, and it kicks off the whole thinking process. Have you ever seen a uh, maybe like a stick laying on the ground, and you thought it was a snake, and so you jumped? Yeah. Yeah. That ever right? Okay. What literally occurred is that instantaneously, or in about two milliseconds or two thousandths of a second, that image came actually into your eye gate, all the way down to your survival brain, to your lowest brain here, and said, be careful, watch out, and you jump. It took about 500 milliseconds, or about a half a second, until you realized it was just a stick, and you had nothing to fear of. But literally what occurred is that your brain was triggered almost instantly. And so we realize this, that we can take and trigger our brain. If we trigger our brain, that means we can start it to do something. We can set it on in motion. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Have you ever smelled something and maybe it reminds you of your mother's cooking? Mm -hmm. Right? Have you ever heard an old song that really carried you back? So if we choose to trigger our brain, if we choose to do that, we can actually take control of it. Now, <coughs> bless you. Let's see, where did I, here we go. You know, I have a muscle here, not a very big one. But if I decide to trigger it, I can actually take these dumbbells and I can begin to do what? I can begin to exercise. I can begin to work that muscle. And what is going to happen to that muscle? Grow, it's going to grow. It's going to get stronger. It's going to begin to expand. Isn't that right? But what I literally had to do is I had to take my conscious mind and make a decision that I was going to take and trigger that muscle or I was going to do what was necessary in order to take control over that muscle. You know, a lot of times we think about our muscles because we want our muscles to grow or we think about our what? Yeah, our waistline there, and we want it to shrink, and so we do the things necessary to take control of it. But many times we don't think about our mind, and literally taking our mind and taking it to the gym. This tool is designed to allow you to begin to take your mind to the gym. Now, if we were racing around the board as fast as we could possibly go, and whoever got there first actually won, what number would we always want to roll? Six, because six. six would be our absolute best, would it not? If we rolled six all the time, would we not be a winner? Okay? So what six is going to represent to us is to do our best. Is to do our best. I want you to take a look at your gold die. Get the one that you've got there in your hand. And I want you to begin to look at the six. And I want you to turn your sixes so they're standing up like this. And I want you to find two pillars standing on a block of gold. Two pillars standing on a block of gold. Look at yours. Okay, everybody pick up theirs and look at yours. Can you see the two pillars standing on the block of gold? The block of gold is you. That's who you are on the inside. The two pillars is what you stand up in your life when you do your what? When you do your best. When you do your best. Now watch this real quick. How do we do our best? We do our best by focusing on one thing at a time. It's the power of focus. If you begin to think about it, every single thing that you've ever accomplished in life, you've accomplished because you have had this laser focus. You have taken and made a decision that you were going to deliver that speech, that you were going to get up there and you are now going to go to the five to seven minute speeches, and now you've got this 20 to 25 minute speech that you're going to have to prepare. You're going to work through this manual. It's got some big things, and you've made a decision that you're going to focus on that one particular thing. And if you focus on that one particular thing with a commitment to do your what? Best. With your commitment to do your best, then what's going to occur? You're going to do your best on it, aren't you? You're going to begin to do that. Now, we realize that any one thing that we focus on, there is how many sides to every story? Two. There's two sides to every story, or more. It could be a hundred different stories. If we saw, if there are five people that saw an automobile accident out here, how many stories would we have? Five, five different versions of it. So two is really going to remind us to take that one thing that we're committed to do our best on 
And as we take a look at that one thing, we're going to take and divide it down. We're going to try to see what we don't see. Because in everything that we want to do, for an example, let's say we want to do our absolute best. And there's one thing, is a project that we're working on. There's what we know and there's what? Everything we don't know. Everything that we don't know. And so we have to begin to understand everything that we don't know. There was a gentleman by the name of <coughs> Benjamin Franklin. I don't know if you ever heard of him or not. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin used to take a board and he would take a divided half, right? A sheet of paper and he would look at something and he would look at the what? The pros and, and the cons. In the cons. And so that one thing that he wanted to do his best on, he would divide it in half, right? And he began to look at the pros, and he began to look at the cons. So let's say that one thing that's impossible that we want to tackle, that one thing that seems to be overwhelming to us, that we want to begin to do something with. We can begin to subdivide that thing down, and we can look at the pros and the cons. We can begin to look at the cost and the benefit. We can look how it affects us short term and how it affects us what? Long term. Every single thing we can begin to break down. We can begin to understand about it so we can begin to solve our problems. You know, a lot of people, will love anybody ever under stress? You ever feel like you have a little stress, a little stress and worry? Okay. I want you to think about this for just a second.